the Paralympics and beyond, the engineering students at Imperial College London have been imagining and designing new technologies for the Paralympic athletes of the future. One of the designs has tonight been awarded funding for further development, and Carl Dinnan is at Imperial College with the students and their project, Carl. Where John, uh, the students have been imagining and innovating uh, at what might be used in Paralympics beyond the one coming up this summer, and really they've come up with some very imaginative stuff. I'm going to start by showing you uh, this device, which is for allowing uh, athletes with disabilities of all kinds and indeed none to take part in clay pigeon shooting. And in, in the chair here is Jeff, and with your team there, uh, Jeff, how does this work? Okay, so the, uh, the platform works by tracking the angle of my head. So if I pitch around to the left here, the platform will move. So to the right, up and down. And then I can... Uh, you can move pretty quickly with that. Yeah, we, we wanted to maintain this uh, physicality of clay pigeon shooting. I don't know how uh, long And bring it to uh, people who are potentially very severely disabled, um, who are otherwise uh, unable to experience a real thrill-seeking sport. Okay, uh, we haven't got a real shotgun here tonight, but you're going to show me how you fire the gun on your, on your device. The, uh, the gun is triggered with this uh, sensor here, so if I just bring it down, I can fire simply by blowing. Brilliant. Okay, so anyone can use that, and uh, I've, I've had a go too, John. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's great fun, that one, I have to tell you. We're going to look at something else here which uses uh, a more subtle use for the head, perhaps. Uh, Victor, this is your brain sled. Tell me how it works. Well, the brain sled is a neurological controlled bobsled that allows quadriplegics and people that are fully abled also to compete in a sport where it's lots of adrenaline, really fast. And, but it's all controlled with just the mind. Your colleague, your colleague has this uh, has, device on his head. Yes, this is the emotive device, and it uses the um, electrical signals for your membrane, which you encode to make the device turn just, left or just, right. Just by thinking, he can make this. This is this is the business end of it down here, John. And just by thinking, he can make this move. Exactly. It's not. It's not working. You're not thinking hard enough. And yeah. this this red bit is, is what you hope it'll look like. This is the visual model, so this is uh, would be a custom-made sled built around the quadriplegic's body to hold them safely, and this was the work ass model. This would be the blades in the front that control the device okay. itself. Well, it, does, it does work. Thank you very much. It does work. I promise you. I've seen it all day. We're going to look now at a device which, uh, as you say, has won some funding. This, this stuff isn't uh, high <gasps> this in the sky funding. as it were. Um, this device, uh, which Ian Dawson uh, is wearing, uh, Ian, you're, you're the former world champion triathlete, and hopefully a future one as well. Uh, and Benedict here is going to explain what you're wearing. Yep, he's wearing the Ghost Personal Power Athlete Training Device. And what we found is that people that have visual disabilities uh, often can't achieve the same kind of technicality that the normal Olympian can. And this is because they can't really form the muscle memory. They don't have the same kind of kinesthetic awareness of their, of their limbs as able-bodied people. How does this help? Uh, this will... Uh, as Jason was about to show, uh, you can store locations in the device and it will help you travel through these waypoints to perform the perfect technique. And these are some programs that we've okay. pre-programmed. Okay. And in, in, how does that feel? How, how, I mean, you, you, you've told me of all sorts of applications for this. Uh, and you've used it a little bit. Uh, what, what use will this be to, to disabled and non-disabled athletes? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's a, a really useful uh, tool potentially um, for in terms of learning the uh, intricate technique uh, for something like swimming or uh, racket sport uh, like a serve. Because it tells you when you've got the exact yeah, yeah. position right. I mean, it, it's, essentially it's giving me feedback uh, by vibrating uh, when I get the uh, each part of my body in the right position. So, for example, when I, um, if I was swimming and I wanted to get my arm out straight at the start of the stroke pattern, um, it vibrates when I get the arm in the right position. Uh, and it does the same as I move it through different uh, points throughout the stroke pad. And that's, that, that's something that can be used by uh, non-disabled athletes as well. That's part of the point here, John. A lot of this stuff is, is about inclusivity for disabled athletes and non-disabled athletes, which possibly points to a future where everybody takes part in those same sports. John. Carl Dillon, and so much technology flying about, it even blacked our picture out for a minute. Yay! Yay!